Dude, episode four already. Wow, I can't even believe it. God, I didn't think the series was going to fly by this quickly. Like, it is going by so quick, at least on my end. I know you guys haven't seen a lot of videos in general um, just coming out, but, like, on my end, doing all the work and all the paints and everything, the series is flying by. I didn't think it was going to fly by this quick. This is episode four. Today, we are going to be painting Tate from American Horror Story, and this was the most intricate, most detailed, most pain in my booty paint I've ever done in my life. I did this paint about three times before actually filming this video. <laughs> and oh my god, the, the, just the amount of detail, the amount of work that I put into practice or in um, skills in order to paint is ridiculous. <laughs> And so with that said, I'm so glad that you guys are watching today's video. I'm really, really glad I put so much hard work into this video. I put so much hard work into this paint. I put so much time and effort and everything into this paint that the fact that you're just watching it, it means absolutely everything to me. I did just want to say that I apologize for how long this video is. Um, it's a little bit longer than a lot of my other videos, I would say. Um, just purely because of how much detail is in it. If you are somebody who's using this video for a tutorial or a step-by-step -step how to for yourself or somebody else, I wanted to make sure that you had as much detail and explanation in each step so that way it made sense and so that way you could actually uh, do the paint. Also, I did just want to quickly mention that I found out that over 60% of you who are returning viewers are not subscribed. What's up with that? <laughs> you're watching my videos anyway because you're returning to my channel and so why not just subscribe and hit the bell notification so that way you are notified every single time I post a video. That way you're not having to search up any videos, you're not having to search up my name or anything like that. It's already going to come up in your subscription feed and it's already going to come up in your notifications. That way it's so much easier and you're making life so much easier for yourself. It's also free so why not join the little family we have going on here? Join this little gang, our little pumpkin gang. If you don't know me, I have a very, very unhealthy obsession with pumpkins. Like, I love pumpkins. So, join our pumpkin patch. Um, alright. <laughs> I think I'm done. I've, like, recorded this intro probably, like, seven or eight times. I'm tired. It's super early in the morning. Um... My brain is just not with it, so let's just, let's just go to the paint. My next video suggestion comes from X Michelle over on Twitch. She does a lot of game streaming, and she suggested that we do Tate from American Horror Story. So the first thing that I'm actually doing with this paint is something that I don't do often with my paints. Not really do I do it at all, but decided to try it. I'm starting off with a hydrating lotion, which I'm pretty sure was just 90% sunscreen. It was advertised as like a hydrating boost lotion, but I kid you not, it just smelled straight, straight up sunscreen. And so I'm putting that as kind of like a base to my paint. Alright, we're gonna start with the most simple thing first, which is the teeth. Now from the reference photo that I'm using, Tate looks like he has 14 teeth on his top and bottom row. So how I'm going to do this is draw a line straight down the center of my lips and do corresponding lines to the right and left side of my cheeks to equal up to 14 teeth. You're then going to exaggerate your natural lip line through those teeth. I'm then going to draw out the shape of where my cheeks are going to be hollowed. On the left side, I'm going to start from the third tooth on the end and work my way out. And on the right side, I'm starting from the second tooth on the end and working my way out. For a reason that I'll explain in just a moment. I'm then going to go ahead and create what I think is supposed to be referenced as a gum line. Doing so, you're going to create little V's in between each one of your teeth, connecting some and leaving some of them open. The best way I can explain on how to do this is to reference your own gum line. Oh, 
So I'm not entirely sure on how to explain how to paint this, but what I'm doing now is I'm creating those stringy pieces of what could be a muscle or a tendon or something that is up in the face. And what I'm doing is just leaving little hollowed out portions so that way it looks like muscles that are behind the gums and not necessarily connected to the gums. Then go ahead and create the lower jawline on each side by creating just a little L. And as I started to hollow in those cheeks with black, I kind of realized that in my reference photo that I was using for Tate, it looked like he had an extra tooth on the bottom row that just kind of faded in a certain way into the black. And I really liked that, and so I decided to go ahead and create that by creating a small half-size tooth. So in order to get this effect that my teeth were blending into the hollowness of my cheeks, I went ahead and focused a lot of detail work with the last two teeth on both the top and bottom rows. I made the line between the top and bottom rows of teeth a little bit thicker, focusing once again just on the last two teeth area, and made the lines between the last two teeth a little bit thicker as well. Then just go ahead and repeat the entire process on the other side. The nose here is pretty standard to any skull piece nose. The only difference is we're leaving a small piece of skin exposed in between each nostril piece and then connecting them on the tip of the nose. I then didn't hollow in my nose right away just because I was starting to get that feeling when you get when you have like paint on your face or something like that and you know that you can't touch it or do anything and your nose or your face starts to tingle and itch and all these things that make you want to touch it. So I decided not to hollow in my nose until that feeling was gone and jump right over to the eyes. I'm not 100% sure how to explain how to hollow out my eyes. I'm literally just drawing black shapes in reference to my reference photo and then literally just covering it in black. And then because my eyelids and nose tend to be a little bit of a greasier area on my face in particular, I am patting down all of those areas using black eyeshadow so that way the paint doesn't crease or run or come off. Now Tate's paint has these little swishes coming from the inner corners and outer corners of the eye pieces. They look like they could be cracks in a skull or something, but I'm making sure to put those in. Tate also has these little dots by the end corners of his eyes and I'm not 100% sure what those are supposed to be but I decided to put those in anyway. I'm then taking a small eyeshadow brush and going in with black eyeshadow very lightly just creating some lines and detail work around the face. While doing this I also try to smooth and make the lines less harsh and kind of blend them out with my finger but in hindsight I kind of liked how harsh of a line looked better than smoothing it out. Then in between each tooth, I'm going in where the gum line is and in between them just adding a little bit of eyeshadow for a little bit more definition. Alright, so to start off this very dark, complicated, but very intimidating neck piece, I'm starting off by just blacking out around my jawline just to create some sort of separation between the face and the neck and then going in starting with the vertebrae. Now when I painted my vertebrae, I pretty much just thought of 
either the base of like a guitar shape or just go ahead and do like butterfly wing shapes on each side, making it really thick though. Then we're going to go ahead and paint the tendons that are going to come across your body and pretty much meet in the center of the bottom of your vertebrae, leaving little breaks so that way little stringy pieces can be connected to them later. Then I'm mapping out where the two tendons running alongside the vertebrae on the right and the left are going to go, continuing with those breaks. Now I had tried a bunch of different techniques on how to draw pretty much like tendons or stringy pieces of flesh or muscle or tissue or whatever it is that you want to call it and one method that I found pretty much worked for my style of painting in general was to just jump in and start drawing lines in all honesty. So that is all that I'm doing now is creating lines over top where those breaks are, creating little V's, making long stroked ones, just a bunch of different sizes and a bunch of different angles and everything else to make it look more like muscle. Now I know that I don't know how to describe most of this paint, but underneath kind of where uh, the top of the vertebrae start, right underneath the chin area, in my reference photo, I have absolutely no idea what that is supposed to be. So what I painted was just a square-like thing that has a lot of lines covering it. And I don't know how to describe that other than just having you guys watch what it is that I did. Then I just went ahead and blacked out the background. Afterwards, I try to add some detail into the tendons and stringy pieces. I still don't know what it is to call them, I guess, muscle. I don't know why that won't come out when I try to say it. But I'm just adding some detail line work just by adding a little bit of black body paint and a little bit of eyeshadow. I'm debating on if I want to post this video because this is not my best work and I'm not proud of this so therefore I'm debating on if I even want to post it but I have practiced this paint about three times before actually sitting down and filming it the first time was to get you know just an idea of where things went how things looked uh, the second time was more for proportions, such as the face. I always made it really, really small and for whatever reason, really tiny and didn't start this until like in here. And I, that was a proportion issue. This time, it's the neck. I, I hate the neck. It's not my work and I have no idea why I hate it so much. 
No, I know I hate it so much. I hate these things. I don't know how to troll vertebrae. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to attempt to fix this look within the next hour and a half because that's how long I have. And so there you heard it. I really did not like this paint after a while and I tried my absolute hardest to fix up what it is I didn't like about it. And if I'm honest, the fix up process was actually pretty easy when I actually took a step back and looked at what I didn't like about the paint and what I felt was wrong. A lot of it was just sizing issues. So I went ahead and just made the tendons on the side of the vertebrae a little bit thicker. I made the tendons that run across the vertebrae a little bit thicker. And I actually took away one vertebrae, which I unfortunately don't have film for. I took away the bottom one, made it a little bit smaller, and added another vertebrae so that way it just looked more filled. And then I just add more lines into the black. I felt like there was too much black empty space and that there needed to be more muscles running through the black. Then once I finished fixing everything up that I thought that there was an issue with, I just went in with a detail brush and sharpened up those lines. And there you have it, my version of Tate from American Horror Story.